Hello again YouTube and I'm back with a short video here and this video here is mainly informational um, you know in the hopes that you know this information can help someone uh, or better yet give them an idea as to how you know what approach they can take to you know maybe uh, you know help out their own situation um, in this video here I'm going to talk about my two charge controllers uh, the midnight char uh, the midnight classic 250 and the Morningstar 600 uh, volt MPPT charge controllers and how they are configured or how they're set up and wired in so that they can complement each other as opposed to fighting each other. I've seen some videos where uh, the individuals were kind of mentioned that their charge controllers, they're using two different charge controllers and they're fighting each other. Um, and so in, with this classic here, uh, when I first got it, um, it, it, you know, it did, you know, I set it up the exact same way that I set up the Morningstar here. And the key thing here is the system voltage, um, you know, and where it goes into absorb mode. Now, my battery, my battery voltage, the maximum battery voltage of my two battery banks together is 32 volts. Okay, that's the maximum battery voltage, 32 volts, and that's the key. This is what I consider to be my primary uh, charge controller. It has the most uh, power connected to it. The, the, you know, the array size is 2,000 watts. And this is what I consider my secondary charge controller. It has the least amount of solar connected to it of 1,400 watts. Uh, this charge controller is set to go into absorb mode, as you can see right here. It is set to go into absorb mode at 32 volts. This particular charge controller, when it, it was, I also initially set this to go into absorb mode at 32 volts. Unfortunately, when this charge controller, when I installed it, the voltage uh, of the charge controller was set to, uh, was not set correctly. I mean, the offset wasn't set correctly and it was reading the voltage incorrectly. It was off by maybe 0.5 volts or maybe even up to a volt. It was off. And so what I had to do was I had to make some changes. Okay. And one of the changes that I made, uh, you can look at what I'm pulling in there right now. One of the changes that I made was I made the, I, I set the offset of the voltage using the software that comes with the Midnight Classic or uh, that you can download from the Midnight uh, website. I use the software to change the voltage offset so they can be more accurate for one thing. What was happening is this particular charge controller was going into absorb mode faster than this charge controller. And when it went in and when the Midnight Classic went into absorb mode, it cut the power uh, that was coming to my battery bank significantly to the point where I was wondering whether or not I was going to get anything from this from this charge controller. Anything, you know, I I wasn't getting the performance that I expected from, you know, by having this type of charge controller with the 1.4 kilowatts of array of solar power coming into it, potentially, um, uh, 1.4 kilowatts. So what I had to do is I changed the absorb voltage set point in this particular, in the Midnight Classic to be 32.4. Now, why did I do this? Well, for one thing, at 32.4 volts, Okay, the Midnight Classic will never go into absorb mode in my system because my battery bank will never, it should never get to that point. It should never get to 32.4. It should always, the highest it should get is 32 volts. So by making this change, okay, by making the change, that means this particular controller will always stay in bulk MPPT mode. It will always stay in bulk mode. And so it will always try to give me as, ma as much power, okay, as I can take it or, or as the system can generate. Now, my primary charge controller will go into absorb mode because it has the most solar connected to it. Now, one other thing, well, you know, you see, well, people may ask, well, why do, why do you do that? Why did you, why did you set it that way? Well, for, it, for one thing, by setting it that way, the two charge controllers will always be operating at maximum performance, okay? 
um, and they won't fight each other at that point. It's all about the set point. It's all about the voltage, okay, the absorbed voltage. If this is never going into um, absorb mode, and this is not in it like it is now, it's in absorb mode, I'm still getting stuff like that, okay? That, and this is, you know, this is at, at almost four o'clock in the afternoon, and my battery bank, I mean, I'm still getting, you know, 59 amps coming in charging. And my battery voltage is 31.2, uh, 31.94 volts. And you can see down there as far as the uh, state of charge, and I'm at 99% and, and this is at 99%. So my battery bank is almost full. Now, when, this, when my battery bank is full, or even now, I can switch over. And again, one of the, the reasons I did this is so that I can actually, during the day, I can simply go off grid or use AC support and, you know, it just switched over to 100%. So now I'm at AC support and now, you know, I'm still getting this power coming in, but, you know, now my loads, I'm actually feeding, you know, uh, my loads, you know, the, the power coming in from solar. So right now... You know, everything is working hand in hand, okay? My battery bank is charged. Now the excess power is actually going to loads uh, with, off, with this off-grid support or this AC support. Now, what I'm going to do, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going completely off-grid. So I go completely off-grid. And so now all of the loads are being you know as opposed to ac support um you know that's you know feed pulling some power from the grid and some power from the battery bank now all of the power is actually coming from my battery bank you know and i can do this because i'm still pulling in 60 amps you know to charge batteries and and my battery bank is full my battery bank my state of charge went down to like seven percent this morning and so, you know, at 7%, I'm like, okay, I need to charge my battery bank back up. So I want maximum power. So my setup, the way I did it, by doing it that way, that means both charge controllers will always be operating at peak performance, you know, always. And now I'm not saying that this is right for everyone. I'm not saying that this is the best way. I'm not even saying that this is the safe way. Um, but this is the way that I'm doing it. Okay, now if you choose to do it your, the same way, uh, you know, you do this at your own risk. I have nickel-based batteries, so I'm not really worried about overcharging them. Um, you know, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried at all, okay? And so, if you got lead-acid batteries, you may want to, you know, consider what type of settings you can make and whether or not this is right for you. Um, but again, the only reason I, I make this video is to, you know, maybe you know give somebody an idea of some things they could check if you got two charge controllers fighting each other these are some of the things that you can check to resolve the issue you know pick one to be your primary controller and pick the other one the lesser one to be a controller where you want you want full blast you want you want this you want nothing but power coming from it and then you can set the absorb voltage you know you can tweak it okay to better suit your needs again will this fit everyone no okay um, is this the best approach to take for everyone no okay it's just an idea that this is or this is my way of saying well for those that may have had the question of whether or not or how my my two charge controllers work the way they do this is how it works okay and both of my charge controllers okay the negative you can see that both charge controllers are connected to the net to the shunt, okay. At the ne the negative poles, they're connected to the right side, and on the positive bus or the positive bus bar, they're both connected to the same positive bus bar. So this there's no mystery here. This is how it's set up. This is the Whizbang Junior. This is how it's set up. This is connected to um, this is connected to my capacitor bank that feeds my inverter, and this right here is just simply connected to the negative bus bar. And then the Whizbang Junior is is actually measuring the current coming to the battery and coming from the battery. So um, now the question is whether or not you know if you know if this is working the way it, like it, if this is working the way it should, 
um, is the whiz bang junior actually reading correctly? Um, you know, and that is a good question. So the so the trimetric is saying it's you know I got 28.4 um, you know amps going to the battery bank. All right, and then my little software here says I got 28.8, which is I'm, I'm actually reading this from the whiz bang junior. And if you look, okay, you know it's fluctuating, but you can see that I'm I'm pulling about 26.8 or 20 well, almost 27. It's fluctuating. And just to go back to the main screen, you can see that okay, 21.2 amps is coming from the uh, coming from the, the array, okay, uh, that's connected to this particular controller. And if you look here, 39 amps is coming from this particular controller. And if you add the two together, you'll get this particular number. This you'll get 60 amps. However, out of the 60 amps, 28 amps is going to the battery bank and 31 amps is going to my household loads at, you know, just under a kilowatt of power. So that's why I did my setup like this so that I can get maximum performance because I actually want to utilize the solar during the day and utilize the solar during the night. I want to utilize my charge controllers to charge my batteries and feed the loads in my home during the day. So I want maximum power. And with my particular charge controller or my inverted charger, you know, I have the ability to either pull in, pull power coming from the grid or, you know, and and you know, in a hybrid capacity, pull power from the grid and from my battery bank or just simply go off grid, uh, you know, all together. And that gives me the, the, my setup gives me the flexibility to do whatever I want. That's why I did it. Okay, if you're going to power your, the loads in your home, if you want to power your AC unit, um, your window AC unit, or you want to do some cooking, washing, you know, clothes, or washing dishes in a dishwasher, running your freezer or your refrigerator, you know, ideally, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you want as much power going, you know, coming from your solar setup as possible. And in my setup, that's that is how I have it configured. As I said, it's not the mo, it's not the best system. It's certainly not the prettiest system, okay. But it does work. It does work. Also, as a side note here, um, you know, I've got this. You know, my obviously my solid state relays are working fine, and I put a you know I, I let this this little hole here be open so that the air so that there can be some airflow inside. Uh, because those solid state relays, even though they're on heat sinks, you can see them, even though they're on heat sinks, you, you definitely want, you know, some airflow in there because without airflow, that inside chamber becomes an oven and we don't want that to happen. So I left this open so that, you know, there'll be some airflow and the, the heat can radiate out and, uh, you know, to keep this inside, keep it cool. And I also have this thing here. It's working pretty well. You can see that I essentially got you know virtually nothing coming in uh, on the input side and uh, so I'm feeding everything out on the output side which is here uh, so alright YouTube just a little informational video hopefully somebody got something from it and uh, take care